I'm just going to play Ambience. We're really excited to keep the story going. Uh, we are joined today by Lee, and um, we hope to see you continue joining us. And now the party is pretty much formed. So um, a bit of a recap of what happened last time. The three of you were on a boat. And you were heading to the great city-state of the Alaman, also known as the Jungle. A, uh, a, a vast metropolis, very diverse, but also dangerous. It's run by uh, merchant gangs and crime syndicates, and there's a royal family, but they're largely just for show. And in fact, the king has been murdered, and his prin his daughter, the heir, has gone into hiding. And uh, it's all it's all everyone's been talking about. And while you were on the boat, the royal envoy of the ro of the king and queen was murdered by a crazed cultist who invited the wrath of a bunch of shark men, who you all defeated. And then you confronted the cultist himself, and he was doing all this in the name of great Lord Nakresh. And uh, after a, um, you know, a tense battle, uh, you quelled him, and you took the amulet that he was trying to steal. And uh, Axel Thorne, the man who was the guard captain, thanked you for this and told you told you that the amulet was probably really valuable, and you should find a man in the city named Old Greeny, who will tell. Who will tell you uh, the value? And, and um, how did and he? How did he say it. that again? Just for anybody who may have missed how he sounded. How, oh, oh! You want me to do the voice right now? I want you to do the voice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, "You know, this jewel might be worth something. You should go and find a man. His name's Old Greeny. The whole town knows him. He'll tell you what it's worth. Good luck, boyos." That was Axel Thorne. Um, Why is his name Greeny? You'll, <laughs> we'll you'll find out. You'll find out. And so uh, that is what we'll pick up. Your boat has just docked. The three of you, Karnov, Merritt, and Flint. Um, you walk through. You walk down the uh, the little uh, plank bridge down from the boat to the docks. You hear seagulls <laughs> sort of calling off in the distance. The bells of docks gong 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 gong. You see tons of people, all sorts of people, gnomes, halflings. Dragonborn, a few other tieflings, um, people of all various um, colors and dress and just everything. Oh, this is very metropolitan. It's very chaotic, and yet it seems like everyone already, everyone who's here, seems like a native and knows what's up, and all just going about their business like a scurry of ants. Between all these various shops, there's all these little like hovels and shacks built of wood. There's huts made of clay. There's buildings made of stone. There's very ornate tents. It just seems like all types of building and life are found here. And you are met right away with the chaos of, what do we do? And then you remember Axel Thorne's words, that Karnov, you have this amulet, and you want to know what it is. So you need to find this man named Old Greeny. You, I human. You look like you know the scum of the earth. I like that about you. Mm, where do where do you bit. think where do you think we should start? Guess I would start the nearest tavern, not the best one, just the one closest. Oh no, no particular reason. <laughs> Sounds like the human boy likes a good drink. That. This is that fish left over from last time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, by the way, um, not to interrupt this, but, but uh, so with inspiration, I always forget to hand it out in the middle of the game. So what I'm going to do is um, at the beginning of every session, I'm going to watch the last session and decide which moment I like the best and award that person inspiration. So, Flint, it's play of the game. Oh, it's play of the game, literally play of the game. For your bear grills ripping of the shark arm, and your continuing of that snack, and your resuscitation of Karnov with that same piece of salty flesh, you gain your inspiration. So you can mark that off, you have a point. Uh, again, my inspiration, you can use it as an instant success for anything. So anytime you fail a roll, you can choose to, to spend it and succeed instead. 
Is that my Obi Wan move? I get one of that those your, per game. You get one Obi Wan move. <laughs> oh boy. I can dig it. That sounds great. Hey, All right, so it. you look around for a tavern, and sure enough, you see one just right in front of you. There's literally one. There's people coming and going from it. Uh, it's a small little wooden building. There's a sign, and with it, uh, on the wooden sign, there looks to be a man with the head of a mouse. And you see the sign, and it reads, The Changeling's Cheese. Ho-ho! <laughs> oh, oh, boy, this place looks cheap. <laughs> hey, that means it that does they look... have cheap drafts, too. One of the windows is blown out. Wonderful. And well, so, uh, it's as good a place as any, I suppose. As long as they have a fire, I can't really. Ma I can manage water, but I can't really do cold. Uh, you walk into the bar and you see that there is no fire. It is very small. There is about three tables and a bar. The bar is run by a man with mutton chops that go into a mustache and slicked back hair that sort of goes down to like his shoulders, sort of rubbing around the bar and uh, looking really disgruntled. And there's about one guy who looks really drunk, passed over on his table. And there's another guy, there's actually a woman sort of like twirling a dagger on her table. And she is sort of dressed in all leathers. She has a cape and a lute. Uh, so I'm going to approach the bar and ask the bartender mm -hmm. for the cheapest draft and the biggest glass. And then I'm going to comment, do you happen to know some sucker named Axel? Because he's got the same weird mustache as you. No, Axel has the handlebar mustache. We Not cleared the way this. you described it last week. That's, that was a retcon. That was a ret that's my retcon. Oh, you've retconned it? Okay, fine. I told you. That was the announcement before we started. I Axel know. has a handlebar. I know. Yes. <laughs> um, so the bartender he, looks he at... He remembers the previous universe. <laughs> the bartender uh, looks at you and just says, Well... <laughs> My character is suffering from uh, what's that? What's that disorder with the Bernstein bears? In it? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, the Mandela, the effect. Mandela, Mandela effect. effect. The Mandela okay, effect. Okay, so I walk away with my beer very disoriented after whatever his reply was. Yeah, well, he he very sternly says, "Uh, it's one copper. Where are you going, dwarf?" I am going wherever my uh, buzzed feeling takes me after this drink. Are you evoking your pirate bad reputation? Uh, only slightly. <laughs> he sort of looks at you and is like, "All right, don't talk, don't cause any trouble." We can count on. He, and he looks at the other two of you and he's like, "And what are you here for?" Information. All right. <laughs> Actually, at at the at the tone information, you see the woman perk up, and she turns to you and she's like, "Well." Do you have questions? I'm in the business of answers. I'm not interested in making you coin. Um, but you don't know what kind of answers I got, son. I, I look back at the bartender, and I ask him if his answers are any better than hers. Uh, some of them? Not really. That, that really is sort of her thing. Uh, well, I guess that'll have to do. It seems to be a recurring theme here. <laughs> and she, the, woman, the woman shoves out her hand towards you, and she's like, The name's Kip Silver. I'll answer any question for a silver. That's the business. <sighs> Very well. And I pull out one of the silver pieces that <sighs> Merritt gave me, and I drop it into her hand. So what's the question, love? We're looking... Uh, for a man referred to as Old Greeny, ah, where yes, can I find him? You'll, pro you'll find him at the Prophet's <laughs> Pasture. It's just um, about a mile down the road, and you can't miss it. It's all green. You'll, see you'll know it when you see it. So that's why he's called Greeny. I chuckle and drip a bunch <laughs> of beer head down my beard. <laughs> I, you I mean, are I a guess, slob. I guess so. He, sh he certainly likes the color green. That's, she's a little, he's a little eccentric. But if you need magic needs, if you have any magic needs in the docks, he's, he's the only guy. Hmm. So, I turn, uh, I turn to the other two. Anything else you need or want? 
Yes. Uh, Barkeep, what what do you got on tap? Beer. Ices. Just one beer. Just one glass. One copper. I pull out one silver. You want you want ten beers? <laughs> uh, two, but the rest of it's for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you kindly. He fills up two tankards. That was and, surprisingly generous of you. Anything? Want this one? Uh, I suppose I should not just ignore your kindness. Okay, so the two of you, all three of you walk out, drinking your beer, walking down the street. You come across tons of people. They're coming and going. Nobody even pays you any attention, which is really strange for you, Karnov. You're used to living your life being sort of a pariah, and everyone's staring at you. For one, just being a tiefling, but also because of your appearance. But it seems like everyone here is usually so freakish, and there's so many different types of people that no one bats an eye. Well, a few bat an eye but not nearly as much as you're used to. And that almost disturbs you. It's a good kind of feeling, though. It's a good kind. So after a while of walking down, you... Kip Silver was right. You do notice it. It's hard to miss. You see before you a well-kept two-story house, which stands in great contrast among the many small shacks and or ornate tents that make up most of the buildings in this area of the docks. It is painted entirely a deep emerald green. Even the windows and roof are covered with the color, and vines of ivy climb up from the ground to the roof on each side of the building. A finely mown lawn of grass lays between this house and the short walls of trimmed hedges that surround it. There are two large oak trees that flank a little cobblestone path that leads to the door. The only thing that is not green on the house is a big wooden sign that reads, The Prophet's Pasture. The three of you also see, leaning against one of the trees, a tall, lean figure, humanoid and reptilian, with lustrous black scales and loose-fitting garb. This dragonborn leans against his spear, tapping his foot and looking lost in thought. Then he looks up and notices you. So, Ori, Lee, you've been standing in front of this building on and off for about two days now. When you fled the monastery to come to this city, you thought your path to the redemption would be clear, but you were lost the moment you set foot in it. The streets are crowded and narrow and winding. The people are numerous, unhelpful and unsympathetic. But you heard rumor that the best fortune teller this side of the world resides here in the docks in a greenhouse. You tried knocking on his door and asking him to tell you your path, but he has refused to open the door. Each time he has told you the time is not yet right, he will not let you enter alone. You will need companions. And wouldn't you know it, but here there are now three odd figures walking up. There is a pasty white tiefling, a salty looking dwarf, and a shifty eyed hooded human. They all appear to be walking up to the building with purpose. What do you say? It seems like it must be my time. What do you guys say? Or, what do you do? I ignore it. I ignore <laughs> it. I have better things to do with my time. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of stumbling towards the towards the door of the of what's whatever this very green place is overwhelmed by all of the plant life. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of green. Um, so do any of you guys say anything to the new dragonborn who has just been standing by this door? Uh, I shiftily kind of wander towards her. Him. Is it him? Him. It's and him. Him. He is him. Towards Ori and just kind of say excuse me as I stumble my way. It's like, oh, uh, what, what, I don't know. Ryan, you got anything? I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, as always, uh, put my ear to the door to see what's going on. You hear some... <laughs> uh, and, like, little puffs and explosions. And <laughs> I use my quarterstaff to bang on the door. 
Yes! Still, still ignoring, still ignoring the Dragonborn entirely. <laughs> I whip back around to the Dragonborn and uh, ask, uh, has this strange person shown himself yet? He, he has says... not. But you've, you've heard him through the door, Ori. He's only spoken to you through the door. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So, so Karnov knocks on the door with his staff, right? Yep. The door flings open, just on its own, and you just hear a voice. Welcome on in! About this. Uh, you too, my, my spear friend. It is now time. Uh, so he's inviting I, uh, all four of you in. I, uh... Cautiously turn back towards Ori the Dragonborn and ask, uh, very, very, you know, as, as an aside, apart from the tiefling and the human, and ask if, uh, do you trust this Mr. Green? E. <laughs> Greeny? <laughs> <laughs> I push past everybody, well, Ori push past everybody and just walk straight in. Okay, Ori, you you are met with a room. It there is a wooden bench. It looks it, it's actually it confuses you because this house looks like almost like a mansion, and yet when you walk in, it's just a small boxed room as if you walk into like a small little like boutique. There is a wooden belt. There's a wooden bench that sort of separates uh, customers from whoever works behind it. You see uh, several chests up on a, another shelf. One of the chests has a note on it that says, "Don't feed me." And then there is um, sort of a rack, and you see a bag hanging from it, and an axe, and um, a pot with lots of little corks in it. There, you, you hear bubbling of lot, and, and you see fumes from multiple little vials over a fire. And then there's a spiral staircase coming down, which you see a human male in a long green robe, and who's wearing a tall sage top hat. He has a huge, long, silky white beard, and one of his eyes is gray, the other is a solid, glowing green without a pupil. And he has a permanent smile on his face, and he's missing one of his front teeth. As he walks down, he's like, Well, what is it? Welcome to the Prophet's Pasture. I look behind me to make sure that everybody is, like, coming through still, and that I'm not the only person in the room. Uh Uh-huh. I walk into this this house and see this weird thing in front of me and say, ah, it must be an entertainer. Well, if you find magic entertaining, I sure do. It... Ha. Huh. Well, I just need information. Well, you came to the right place. Let me cut to the chase then. And I take out the necklace. I collected this in a... transaction. But I'm not quite sure it was worth my time and effort. What can you tell me about it? I can tell you. I can identify it. That's a simple spell. Costly, though. Costly. Why would we be able to figure out where it came from by our own means, though? Do you know the Do you know the arcane arts, my friend? I uh, can't say I'm terribly familiar with it. Then you'd be shit at trying to find out. <laughs> <laughs> now then, uh, don't think I've forgotten you, my skilled friend. Your fortune's coming up. It's on the docket. Now was the right time. But I'll cut you a deal, y'alls. I don't think you have the corn. Y'all smell new to the jungle. But I can waive the fee, give you a freebie, if you do me a favor. Is it another long favor? Shouldn't be. I just need you to clear my basement. Why? <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you sure? Are, are you sure you just don't want money? <laughs> There's a little goblin guy, and he's just been causing all sorts of a ruckus. I just need him gone. Ah, oh, it's another murder. 
<laughs> he hasn't murdered anything yet, I hope. Do you, but, have, I mean, y'all do can... you have things to murder in your basement? Sometimes. Huh. Is, is this is, this isn't like a, a weird big arcane mystical labyrinth of the basement, is it? Now, now, now! Don't be giving old Greeny none of your sass. Old Greeny is just straight to hell. That's a definite yes. This is definitely gonna be a labyrinth. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Okay, so, so, how much how much coin am I saving? It would cost you a hundred and twenty gold for an identify a spell. Um, everybody want to go what? in so I don't have to do this? You know what? Can I can I stay upstairs and look in the box that says feed me? You want to look at the... Oh, uh, what do you want to look at the box for? You wanna I want to see what's inside. So, okay, so you ask him time. what's inside? And he's mm -hmm. like, looks at it, and he's like, uh, Teeth, mostly. Then I'm, I'm going to head to the basement with them. I wouldn't trust a single thing he says about his basement or his box. <laughs> so he sort of points. He sort of points down by the end of the uh, wooden bench. There's a hatch, and you pull it open. And there's a set of stairs that go down. And uh, so, okay. <laughs> so I wait for the, the others to enter first. Okay. So Ori uh, stands behind. So hold on. So is it like an open? Is it like an open doorway to the basement, or is there a door there? Yeah, it's like a little cellar. He just has it open, and like you walk down the stairs. Oh, okay, it's got like a bulkhead or whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I suppose we don't have any other options unless there's another magic consultant nearby. Does anyone know? I do, and no, there's not. <laughs> uh, so I feel like we... you have a have a stake in telling me that. <laughs> I don't eat steak. It ain't green. <laughs> uh, I will, uh, can I do a check for the um, the, 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 the the what's the what's the word for it for the cellar? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, once you enter and you all get in. Well, wait, what do you want to do specifically? Um, just kind. What of, are you checking? Ev evaluate it for anything suspicious. Okay, that would be a perception check perception when you. Uh, check. The, the phrase escaped me because it's been a week. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a lot of checks are perception checks. So, um, the four of you march down the stairs, and you reach the bottom, and you see a, um... What did I yeah, it is a wide basement, and it's probably about, like, 40 feet by 40 feet, and you see shelves of books hugging the right wall. There's a bunch of barrels and crates all haphazardly stacked in the back, and towards the left, there's a workbench with various vials and tubes of glass. Everything in this room is dusty and cobwebbed, except for the floors, which are oddly spotless. And you see, just very obviously, in the center of the room, floating about five feet in the air, a single goblin. His arms are stretched out as if he was crucified. One hand is closed around some sort of gem. The other one is only bone, the skin and flesh looking as if it has dissolved away. Roll your perception check. This was a uh, mistake. Roll, roll your perception check. I'm gonna okay, and uh, I just have to input this back in. Um, my perception, I have a three modifier. Yep. Uh, I have gonna, a four modifier. Uh, Ryan, uh, actually, Ryan, would you like to roll it then instead? Sure. Go ahead. Go for it. I rolled an eight. Eight <laughs> total. Oh, eight uh, plus the modifier, so twelve. So an eleven. So an eleven. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's that's better. So that's definitely <laughs> that's definitely a goblin. Um, <laughs> you don't you don't know why it's floating, but it's there. You also see, but with an eleven, you see that the table that's with sort of the work workbench. There are three vials of liquid that are there. There is one that is red, one that is green, and one that is uh, clear. Is it clear because it's clear, or clear because it's empty? It's clear, like, the, the liquid is clear. Fluid is clear, okay. It has fluid in it, but the fluid is clear. Got it. Uh, and the goblin is just there, silent, eyes closed. God. Can you go back upstairs and say that the job is done now? This is creepy. Um... <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run my ever-useful arcana check on the room. Yeah, please do. <laughs> okay, go for it. 
Uh, roll is 15 with modifier, that's 20. Uh, what, what particularly are you trying to discern here? Uh, what might be causing him to levitate. He is not magic in in nature, or he is not levitating by magical means. So the 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 he's the somehow then. he is somehow up in the air, mm. but it wasn't a spell that's doing it. Something with those potions, then I'm assuming. Can I do a perception check on the goblin specifically? Go for it. All right. Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Good. You look, you look really closely at the goblin, and then you see the air around him shift a little bit. And you notice he's not in the air. He is in a giant mass of goo. Ah, damn it. And you hear sort of a... As if something is sniffing you, and I would like you all to now roll initiative. Oh, boy, here we go. Uh, what do I roll for initiative? Ah, is, that a D, is that a d20 that I roll? D d20 plus uh, your dexterity modifier. And then Evan, if you want to, if you want to click on my screen so I'm bigger. Okay. Can... I... You never see it coming. <laughs> you never see that my mind is too fast for fast for you, dumb man. All right. So, cool moves, Joker. Ori, you are in the back because you went for Wrong everybody game. else in front of you. <laughs> uh, I will say that Flint is probably up the closest because he is looking at stuff, as is Karnov. And Merritt, you are next to Ori. I'm a dirty coward. All right. My, my initiative was 16 with my bonus. <laughs> That's so okay. terrible. What is yours? I'm four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That no. That, that makes things interesting. Okay. Um, Ori, I will. Yours was nineteen. Okay, Merit, and then Flint. You said yours was sixteen. It was. All right, and then Ori, I will roll for you. <laughs> okay. Oh, that is a natural twenty. Okay, so. Oh jeez. I'm over here with a four. <laughs> yeah, I can't. This guy has, like, a dexterity of, like, two, and you're going after him, Karnov. Feel proud. So, <laughs> let, me get, oh, no. let me get situated here. <laughs> Please stand by. Uh, is everything looking clear to you guys, or do you want me to adjust the... Um... Looks good to me on the chat. Yes, yeah. Battle screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. So everyone knows where you are and what you're facing? Here, maybe I'll yeah. maybe I'll shift it. Like, does that look better to you guys? It's yeah. yeah it it, like it looks like a tiny version of James Cameron's The Abyss, no matter how you shape it. So, well, you guys are all facing off against a gelatinous cube. Huh. Interesting. I love these guys so much. Okay. Shit! 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 How do you kill gelatinous cube? Gelatinous cube. Uh, all right. So it is round one. Ori, it is your turn. Oh gosh. Um, Hold on. What special thing at the moment do I have? I mean, can I like so talk you can, to it? You can try. Okay, yeah, I try to talk to it. Okay, what do you say? <laughs> What's your purpose? It jiggles. Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to it? And you see... You That's actually a character. see. Sorry, I'm not yelling at you. You see the, <laughs> you see the goblin inside of it. You can see its cheek is slowly dissolving away, and you begin to realize this thing is probably more of a beast than a sentient creature. And your words have no effect. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? I will say that's your bonus action. If you'd like to run up and attack, or if you'd like to do anything else, it is up to you. Okay, no, no, I'm not going to do anything else. Not going to do anything else? Okay. Uh, in that case, Merit, it is your turn. Is there anything he can hide behind? You, there are uh, rows ah! of... Are we doing there are this again? Of, there are shelves of books. There's one here, 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 and here. So you could dart can... behind one of them. 
I'm gonna hide behind the, the nearest bookcase to the door. Okay, so that would be right there. Roll me a stealth check. An eleven. And eleven. Plus what? What, what? what do I need to uh, plus it with? P plus your uh, your stealth skill. So I should say, uh, in your skill section. Eleven plus seven. That's an eighteen. That's an eighteen. Okay. So you instantly just as soon as you see danger, you run away and you duck behind <laughs> the shelf of books. Your shoulder is really dusty as soon as you push your shoulder up to the wood. And you're looking at this cube, and you it doesn't have eyes, but you're extra sure it doesn't see you. Uh, Flint, it is now your turn. Uh, Alright, I'm going to two-hand my longsword and go take a dive at it. Yeah, you go for it. Uh, Alright, so I'm rolling my d10 with a modifier of... Well, first, first, you, roll a, first you roll a d20 to see if you hit. Oh, right, doi. Modif uh, D twenty with a strength modifier, right? And proficiency, so it's like your attack bonus. So it's probably plus five on your sheet. Uh, my attack bonus is five. Uh, hold on. Yes. So it's a D twenty yeah. plus five. Okay. Uh, we got a twenty. Natural, like twenty no, on the no, dice. No, no, with the modifier. With the modifier. Okay. Well, that that, that definitely hits. Okay. So I'll roll the d10 and then add your strength bonus. So d10 mm -hmm. plus 3. Where's my t where's the d10? 10, 3, roll. We got a 9. 9 damage. Okay. So. So you just charge up. Ah! You hack right into this big gelatinous mass. And you see you cleave away a core corner of it and just goes and sl scatters across the floor and you hear it sizzle as steam rises from where it's ooze it's the ground and it looks like you carved a, a small chunk of it but it's still 10 by 10 feet of jiggling blue mass and you see from the cube this little tentacle sort of forms out of it and lashes out at you oh jesus uh can i use my attack search or action search oh you can action search before it's turn. Yes, you can, can I, if you want. Can I do that at the tentacle part? Uh, sure. Is that yeah? Is that, is that worth my time? I mean, you can attack. It won't. It won't like specifically affect it. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so I do my d twenty again, or? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, thirteen. To hit. Yeah. And Hits. Rolled. Uh, 13. 13 damage, nice. Woo! So Neat. this little amorphous tentacle sort of starts to form, and you just like, and you pivot, and you slice it off, and it sort of turns to liquid as soon as you do, and it splashes against the ground. But then you see another tentacle just splorts out of it and still just smacks at you. Yeah, Jesus. All right. And that would be a... That is an 8 to hit you. Uh, my armor class is 16. So that is a miss. So the, 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 the next tentacle comes out and slashes at you. And you just whack it away with your sword. But then you see it. And it you hear it. As it jiggles and moves. Slides down the ground. Towards you. And you see it coming, 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 as if to merge with you. I would like you to roll a dexterity saving throw. Okay. With a modifier of one. Is that a uh, d20? Yep. Okay. 19. 19. Okay. That is enough. So as it starts moving towards, you know what's coming, and you just uh, dart off to the side. Okay. And then it just keeps sliding it's just and going sliding, forward. Okay. okay. And sliding. Okay. And now, Karnov, I would like you to roll me a dexterity saving throw. Oh boy. This is not going to be good. I'm going to roll different I, dice. Hang on. I wish you guys could hear this really dope music right now. <laughs> <laughs> what did you roll? Is this is my night. Oh my goodness. It's a crit fail. That's a one. <laughs> That's a one? <laughs> so 
So you're just. You're I just... even changed dice. I have like six D twenties for this problem. <laughs> oh no, this is amazing. Okay, so you you're so horrified at this jiggling mass of goblin jello suddenly barreling towards you that you lock up and you don't even react as it goes and completely <laughs> engulfs you and you are now inside the cube oh dear okay <laughs> ah beans this is a bad night huh so Karnov it is now your turn and as you are completely engulfed you suddenly feel a burning sensation all over your body as <laughs> That was the lowest possible roll. You take three points of acid damage. Oof. Oof. Okay. So you can use your action to try to break out of the cube. Uh. Or yeah. you might be able to attack inside it. Let me double check. If if or if you want to break free. F find out if I can attack, because I'd like to attack, uh, to break free if possible. Uh, no, you are restrained when you're in here. And uh, you cannot breathe. Awesome. But you can use so, your action to make a strength check to escape. Uh, okay, let's see what happens here. Go for it. Come on, this time. Ten! That's a number that's not one. All right. So, you begin... You begin waking up as soon as the acid starts burning away at you. You just start pushing away, and you can't push through the jelly. <laughs> and you are still stuck in this cube. Ori, it is back to your turn. I've been thinking about what to do. Um... You are standing face first with this huge 10 by 10 wall of acidic goo. You now see a tiefling and a <laughs> goblin in the middle of it. Acidic goo. <laughs> That's like what it is. Well, I'm not for sure it can't hurt me because, you know, it's acid. Mm. Is there anything in the room that I can use against it, like the potions then? You can try looking at the bottles over on the other on the table. Um, okay, do they have labels? just try attacking it. No. No? Because if I attack just... it, I might, like, hurt the people inside. You won't hurt the people inside. They're pretty thickly engrossed. Okay, then I want to attack it with the spear. You attack it with the spear. Go for... Okay, so, um... You don't have dice, right? No, no I don't have dice. Okay, I will roll for you. I believe you have a plus five to your attack bonus with the spear. So that is a nine plus five, fourteen. That will hit. The spear is a d8 plus three. That is seven, so you do a total of ten points of damage to this cube. So all of you watch as this lustrous black dragonborn whips out his spear and just shink, stabs it into the goo and pulls it out like a harpoon. A little bit of that goo sort of bleeds out of it. Karnov, you see as this sharp point sort of stabs by your face and pulls out almost in slow motion. Um, so that is your action to attack. You can use a bonus action to also unarmed attack or spend your key points, uh, move away from it. It's all up to you. Well, yeah, okay, I'll move away from it. Okay. Uh, do you want to move? Do you want to move to a side or which side do you want to be? I want to be on the side with the potions, so. The potions, okay. So mm -hmm. over here. Now, do you want to get out of the way so like it can't hit you? Because if you will, then it will have an attack of opportunity. What? Uh, so an attack of opportunity is when, you, when you're in combat with something and you leave it without disengaging, it gets one free shot at you. But if, oh. you, stay, if you stay within its range, it can't do that. So if you stay right here, you can still get to the potions without it trying to hit you. Okay, yeah. All right. And so um, is that your turn, or would you like to use a bonus action for something? No, no, I never use it. Okay. So then, uh, Merit, it is your turn. I'm going to look through the books directly in front of me to see if I can find something, anything about gelatinous cubes. Uh, make an investigation check. Uh, investigation plus four, so that's a 20. That's a 20. 
Uh, yeah. Oddly enough, you do find a book as if it was recently pulled out, and it is slimes and oozes and you. <laughs> I am going to spend uh, my entire turn reading frenet uh, frenetically through this book. Okay, uh, you find you find the chapter on gelatinous cubes, and you you learn that it is made of acid, so it resists acid. It is immune to acid, and it deals acid damage. I should have told you that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but how do I? Get, how, does, it, does it tell me anything about how I how I get rid of this thing? Uh, you still need to what, read. What, okay. You can, you can, you read a little bit that you gotta kind of just mash it like a fire until it's smothered and put out. Read a book. So uh, you just gotta keep wailing on it. That's what you learn. Uh, Flint, it that's, is your turn. That's it. All I, all I can do is just keep sl swatting at it. You can try the the potions. Do I have any? No, or, but there's oh, three the... on the table. But Ori's up there. Do I? push the potions on the blob, or do I consume the potion? You could drink them, or you could throw them. Hmm. I you don't know they're potions, you just know that they're vials of liquid. You know what? You said that, uh, oh, hmm. Can I do a perception check on them? Would I be able to garner anything from that? Uh, probably not. Like, every, a round in combat is usually six seconds. That's probably not enough to Got really it. see it. Got it. Okay, so... Um, hmm, huh, there's a blue one, a red one, and a clear one? There is a green one, a red one, and a clear one. You can't screw up more than me, you might as well throw one. You know what, <laughs> let's try taking the green one and throwing it at the cube. Alright, so you run over there, and then you hawk it over. Do uh, I have roll to an do attack. Like, an attack? Yeah, roll, roll an attack, just use your strength modifier, so plus three. A d20 plus... Three. 19. 19. That'll definitely hit. You throw this vial of green and it hits the cube and splashes and you see where the liquid hit. A green flame erupts and sort of burns all over the cube as Alchemist's fire burns away at one of the side of it. I'd like you to roll 3d6 fire damage. 3d6. Yep. Uh, three dice? Yeah, three six-sided dice. Okay. <laughs> Four. Four total? Four total. All right, so you throw it. Yuck. It splatters. The cube sizzles a little bit, and it goes back to jiggling. That's it? It didn't turn <sighs> green? The fire was green. But the cube didn't turn green. The cube did not turn green. Damn, I was hoping I could just call the dude from upstairs and have him eat it if it turned it green. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it is it is now Mark. your turn. It's now uh, whose turn? It, it, turn? No, sorry. It is now the cube's turn. Okay. And it jiggles once again over to you, Ori. And I'd like you to roll me a dexterity saving throw. So, uh, Ori, on your character sheet, there should be a little box that says saving throws. And tell me the number. Tell me the number that's next to dexterity. Or the number below it. Um. Uh, yeah, next to your stats, there should be a small box up near the top that says saving throws. And there should be um, a number for strength, dexterity, uh, constitution. Oh yeah, yeah. So dexterity says five. Plus five. Okay, so I rolled you a three, and that will bring it to a total of eight. And that will not be enough. So as you turn and you see the potion, you see the cube also engulf you. Oh! As it completely engulfs you. And you are now with the tiefling and the goblin in the cube. And it starts I to burn. Gone hide. It starts to burn you a little bit. And then it creeps forward towards you, Flint, and that same tentacle just swoops out at you. And that, that is a natural 20 on the cube. <laughs> the cube rolled a natural 20? The, the cube just crit you. Me? Yes, you. That's not a good sound. <laughs> what can I do? You can take... Fuck. <laughs> you can take 
18 points of acid damage. Oh. As this thing just wallops you in the face, and you see about half of your beard has dissolved. Oh! That <laughs> asshole! <laughs> what the hell? Karnov, it is now your turn. And you take... Uh... Take eight points of acid damage. Oh, come on! Hold on. So, hold on, uh, Alex. You want me to update this page here? Oh yeah. Sorry. Um. I yeah. When I'm when I'm in combat, I can't be like okay. filling with my okay. screen. Okay. Okay. So my current hit points are seven. Okay. Um. What about uh, Karnov? Karnov, I'm what's at your three. hit? Your three. Thanks okay. for that. Ori, what's your current hit points? But I got hit? Did, did I get a, like, a... You, you, haven't, you haven't taken damage yet, Ori. Okay, okay. so okay. still seven... Okay, um, and Merit hasn't Karnov. taken any... Merit hasn't taken any damage yet either, right? No, he, so Merit's been reading. Uh, Sorry, uh, say so that Karn again, coward. <laughs> oh, he is a dirty coward, yes. Drag yeah. him. Drag him. Okay, um... <laughs> so, Karnov, you can use your action to try to break free again. Uh, Fifteen! Fifteen! Okay! So, you, as it engulfs the dragon board, it sort of pushes you out, and you feel your elbow poking out of the cube, and you use that leverage to just push yourself out. Where would you like to land? Oh, gosh. Uh... Over by the dwarf, <laughs> if at all possible. That's possible. <laughs> so, like a calf being bored, and you, you just slide <laughs> out covered in goo <laughs> and land on the floor next to the dwarf. What would you like to do now? Uh, so I used my action, right? I have a bonus action. You have a bonus action, and you have your movement. Uh, I'm going to move as far backwards as I possibly can. <laughs> All uh, right. My movement is 30. Yeah, yep. you're, you're in the back there. I guess you can go, like, there, too. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I want to get far away. And uh -huh. uh, that's it. I'm good for now. Okay. Uh, Ori, <laughs> at the start of your turn, you feel a slight burning sensation. One that you're almost used to. As a black dragonborn, you have your acid breath, and you've, as a child, accidentally, you know, lost control of it, and you felt it upon yourself, and now you're feeling it again as you take what would be 12 points of damage halved to 6 points of acid damage. Wait, wait, how can I get acid damage if, like... You have resistance, so you take half damage. You're not immune. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. You would have taken 12. You took 6. Okay. And now you can use your action to try to break out of the cube. So I will roll you a strength check. Um, I believe. What's your strength modifier? I believe it's zero. Uh, um, but I rolled a seventeen. So you also break out. Where would you like to be? What side of the cube? I want to be by the books. By the books. So you. <laughs> You poke your spear out <clears throat> and follow it as you just jut out like a missile and land on that side of the spear. Uh, you have your bonus action and your movements. What would you like to? What would you like to do? Can I look in like? Because I know I have the prayer book in my inventory. Mm -hmm. Can I look inside that for like uh, answers on how to deal with this? Uh, you you would have already known as a monk who's clearly studied these long like many many times. There wasn't anything about cubes and gelatinous forms of them in your prayer books. You already know that. But it, it looks like uh, this guy over here is reading something about them really interesting. What does he have? Okay, then I'll go out with the books too. Okay, so you run off and you start oh reading as God. well. I roll ah! right here. Kill me. <laughs> I roll a three. Yeah, they're, they're killing me is what's happening. <laughs> so you, You're tearing you, me apart! <laughs> you pick up a book, 
and you look at it, and as you turn the pages, the goo that's still on your hand burns away the pages, and you can't read anything. And you're just flipping through, and you're realizing you're only making this book work. <laughs> Uh, Merit, it is now your turn. For the love of God, do something. I'm gonna look in this book. Ah! Oh, <laughs> for... No, no, no. For... Po for potions and their effect on these cubes. Okay, well, there's a blue one and a clear one left. See if there's anything on those. Uh, there's, a, there's a red one and a clear one. And Sorry. actually, um... Flint, standing next to it, you think you know what the red one is. But you're not quite sure. Uh, it's either health or it's fire. <laughs> for you to find out. Or it's um, booze. Or it's booze. Uh, uh, so, I, what are you looking <laughs> for, um, <laughs> uh, Merit? I'm looking for uh, potions and their effects on gelatinous cubes. There are none. None that are apparent or different. It all depends on what the potions are. Uh... In, in the book, about what if they were thrown at a cube would affect them. There's there's there there's nothing that specific in this book. Okay, great. Um, I'll say I'm that's your bonus to... action because that was that was finishing the chapter. I'll still give you an action if you want to like throw a dagger or something. I'm going to continue sulking in this corner. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Flint. Then it's back up to you. God. Alright, the only thing I have this. left to try, because clearly slicing it aggravates it, is uh, throwing these other uh, vials of liquid at it. So, I guess okay. I'll, I'll try that again. Um, I'm not uh, gonna which... pick... I'm gonna pick the red one, because the clear one looks too much like this cube. So... Uh, okay. What is it? My strength My strength modifier is three? Did so, do? picking... Yeah. Picking, picking it up, Yeah. you know that it's a potion of healing. The red one? The red one that's in your hand right now. And what it's a potion of healing. What about the clear one? You have no idea. I have no idea. Okay, well, okay. Maybe I'll just consume the potion of healing. Uh, Karnov needs it, doesn't he? I mean, you probably need it too. Yeah, but I have more than him. That's true. <laughs> up to you. Mm, all right, I throw the red potion at Karnov if I can make that action. Uh, Karnov, roll a dexterity check to catch this potion. Oh, <laughs> you're killing me here. You're literally killing me. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, the the dwarf sort of pivots around and tosses a bottle to you, and you catch it hungrily because you know what it is and you need it. Um, okay, Flint, I'll say that that was, that was probably your action, but, um... Okay. I can't do a surge then, I would assume, right? You, you've, you've spent your surge. I've spent my but surge. But you, you still have your, um, your movement and a bonus action, if you have any that you can do, which I don't Is think you can. Is there any way, could my bonus action be, uh, readying a shield? Uh, yeah, you can pull, I'll say you can pull out your shield, yeah. Yeah, so I will take my bonus action as readying my shield and okay probably... your armor class is now 18 yep and okay move i guess i'll just move back to the wall closer to where uh he is yeah okay so as you back up yeah the tentacle reaches out again and rolls a 12 against okay. your 18 okay so you you expertly pull up your shield to slap it away uh-huh and I can't and I can't get you. Okay. It is now the cube's turn, and it starts sniffing, and there's only one person in this room that it has not slimed, so there's one smell that is growing stronger than everyone else, and that is the little human in the corner. <laughs> Finally some justice Merit, I would like you to roll a dexterity saving throw. Or a D what? A, dex a dexterity saving throw. Saving throw. Oh, uh, what do I need to roll? D twenty. D twenty. D twenty plus your saving throw modifier. Alright. I roll an eighteen. You roll an eighteen. Okay, so as it jiggles forward, you dodge back <laughs> instinctively. But in now you are in into what? He's into on the, wall. the wall. 
you are now pinned between a shelf of books, walls on either side, and a wall of goo. You are now literally cornered, like, here he is. Here's the cube. Can't even see him on the board <laughs> right now. There, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put it like that. There you are. A wedding. All right. And that is its turn. It used double movement. Karnov, it is now yours. Okay. First things first. Let's get this uh, Let's get this health potion drink. That's a D4, okay. right? It's 2D4 plus 2. So 1, 4... So five plus two is seven. I can get you get that. you get seven health back. Puts me back at ten if you want to put that on the screen. Okay. And I'm about. I'm trying to tell from the grid there. It's kind of at a weird, uh, weird distance. How many squares are between me and the grid right now? Uh, between you and the cube, there the are cube, yeah. one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's thirty feet away. Thirty feet away. Okay, cool. Yep. And then I'm still in range. I'm gonna go ahead and use my okay, cool. spell, one of my spell slots, to cast Witch Bolt directly at that cube. Okay, go for it. Oh. It's my new spell for my level up. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen definitely hits. So I believe okay. I believe that's a D twelve. It is a D twelve. The, the rarely used, the lonely D twelves. I should have a D twelve. Where is it? <laughs> like look at the there it is. All it's right. the little blocky one. Yeah. Yep, I got it. I just had to dig through all my dice. Ha. Uh, two. <laughs> two damage. Okay. Yeah. But I believe you maintain concentration, and you can keep damaging that way. Yeah, so, on each of my turns, I can use my action to deal 1d12. So you watch Flint as Karnov reaches out his hand, and this bolt of lightning shoots out of it. It hits the cube, and it's like, where it's hitting the cube, it's now writhing and sort of hissing. And it looks like Karnov's maintaining some kind of a deadly connection with it. And now, Ori, it is back up to you. You're looking at these I books. I am like... Mm -hmm. No, the slime is on my hand, so I could use any of the alchemist tools that I have. Uh, no, not in this instance. Mm. Mm. Is there a way to like wipe the goo off my hands? Uh, yeah, the goo, the the goo on your hands isn't doing anything now, other than being gross. So you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about the goo. Okay, can I search the bookcase to see if there's anything that would be, like, that would help? Yeah, do a really, a really quick uh, investigation check, so I'll roll that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Your intelligence, I believe, is plus two. So that is a 15. You scan the books really quickly, and uh, you don't see anything else about cubes, or gelatinous forms, or oozes, or anything. It looks like you're, you're, you're getting to suspect you kind of just got to beat this thing down, and then it'll dissolve. Okay, then can I use my spear? Oh no, I want to use the darts. You want to use the darts? Okay, uh, the yeah. darts are, are ranged, so you should kind of like you should walk away to throw them. Okay. Um, okay. So you'll pop out. Let's say one, two, three, four, five. Seven, yeah. Okay. So and you can actually throw two of them because they are light. So, uh, one of those will be a seven, a seven, actually both of them will hit. Yeah. Both of those will hit. A seven hits, as, as does a 21. And so those are both a D4 plus three. So that is two plus one, three plus six. You to do a total of nine points of damage to the cube. Is that good? That's pretty good. Okay, yay. <laughs> That's solid. So you watch as the uh, the Black Dragonborn darts from away the bookcases, runs in front of you, Karnov, and then pivots around and throws two shuriken-like darts at this cube, and they suk, suk, stick right into it. And now there's two little holes where those darts hit in the cube. And now it is back up to you, Merit. You are face-to-face -face with the cube. What would you like to do? 
and I pull out my, my dagger and my short sword and go at it with both of them. Can I do that? Uh, yeah, so uh, roll, roll the short sword first, because it's stronger. It is a d8. Well, for, it's first a d20, to see if you hit. And then a short sword is a d6, plus your dexterity. I rolled a 15. Do I, have, do I add anything else to that? Uh, you don't need to. That'll hit by itself. So a d6 plus your dexterity. Six, where are you? That's the cube. I rolled a 5 plus my dexterity is... Plus 3, I think? So that should be 8. Yep. All right, eight points of damage on the short sword as you shove it into the cube and it sort of jiggles a bit. And you notice now that the cube is getting smaller and thinner. And now you can stab at it with your dagger. So that'll be a D D20 plus five, I believe. Then, 12, 13, 16. That'll hit. So that'll this, hit. this will be just a D4, but not without a modifier because it's your offhand attack. So just a D4. The, uh... That's the pyramid? Yeah, yeah, little spiky guy. E. It's a little spiky boy. Yes, I rolled a three. You rolled a three. You do three more damage. Nice. As you hack into it with a second time. And you're just sort of... It's sort of like Drax the Destroyer in Guardians 2 when he's inside the alien. And it's sort of hacking away and all this goo is splattering out of it. And, and it's laugh, covering you. And laughs at himself a lot. Yeah. 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 That's gonna be nasty. Uh, Flint, it's your turn. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, would it be awkward if I attempted to consume a ration to restore some health in this moment? It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Damn it's not it. video game rules. It's not like Skyrim where you just pause and eat a bunch of cheese. Well, you should be. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Especially with my character. <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, I'm trying to evaluate what I have here that could potentially help me. Cause I got a, uh, I got a, I got some torches and I got a tinder box. I just want to burn this thing. You can do that. You yeah. have your throw, you have your throwing axes. You can throw a torch at it. There's one more vial on the table. Ooh, there's one more your... vial. Maybe I should check that out. Oh, do you want Ooh. to? I may as, I may as well. Does okay. That, does that does that have to? You say that with hesitance. <laughs> I'm just saying it like I'm saying it, man. Okay. All right. Uh, I pick up the vial. Do I notice anything about right. the vial differently than it is in my hand? Uh, no. It's just a clear liquid. Okay. I don't know. Group call. Any guys? Should I should I try this or does it seem sketchy? It this can't be any worse than anything else torch. we've done. Throw the torch. Right. Throw the torch. Fine, I'll throw a torch at it. <laughs> okay, so you will light a torch and you will huck it over. Okay. I will, I'll, I'll say you can just, um, yeah, throw it and then you do uh, a d4 of fire damage. Okay. Uh, do I need to do a strength roll for first? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, just make an attack. Okay, uh, 12. That, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So you throw it, roll a d4, fire damage. D4, fire damage. Uh, two. So you do two fire damage, and I'll say that some of the fire sort of licks up some of the liquid that's pooling out of it, and it's now igniting one side of the ooze. Oh. Oh. Weird. So now it is its turn, and it will take another one point of fire damage. And now it will punch out at you, Merit. That is a 12 to hit you. My armor class is 14. So then it misses, so this little tendril sort of whips out at you. Whoosh, and um, you just duck out of the way. But then it just sorely creeps forward. And you realize you are cornered. Make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. As there is nowhere for you to turn. All right. So what does that so mean? So disadvantage means you roll two d twenties and you have to take the lower one. It's good. <laughs> okay. Roll it again. Roll it again. Uh, 
What was the uh, what was the second number? Sixteen and fourteen were what I rolled. Okay, so fourteen plus your dexterity save modifier. Dexterity save modifier is da, 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 three. So that will be uh, seventeen. That will be enough, surprisingly, as you instinctively just <laughs> scramble up the top of the staircase and leap over here as it now just. And he's, uh, he's a little too good at getting away with all this. <laughs> and then it slides back. And moves over there. And then corners you in that way. <laughs> and that'll be the end of it. Karnov, it is now your turn. Okay, I'm gonna remain in my position. Uh-huh. And I'm going to use my action to again roll a d12. Go for, for it. Damage. 11. 11 points of lightning damage as you just channel that energy <coughs> more and more. And it intensifies and zaps away at it. And you see the cube starts to wither and go down. It's getting smaller and smaller. And it looks like it's just barely holding together. The goblin itself is now limp and sticking out of it. Let your hate the slide up. you. <laughs> Unlimited power! Ori! What? What is... <laughs> what is going on? I looked up oop sound effects. Oh, I thought someone was just like, a bong. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> and that's how we goop, gotta stop goop video sound and broadcast on Twitch, everybody. Uh, oh, that's just... Oh, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's basically Ugh. what it sounds like. It's, it's it accurate, but it's not pleasant. Um, okay, Ori, it is your turn again. <laughs> okay, so it's acid resistant, too? Yeah. Can I decide to, like, grab the goblin instead? You could try, Can yeah, stick it out. out. Yeah, okay, uh-huh. I want to grab it. Okay, uh, so you run up. Uh, make a strength check. So uh, I will roll that for you. That is a 17. That is enough. You just grab onto his arm and you <laughs> yank him out. You are now holding a dead goblin. Oh, God, he's dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you sort of plop him on the ground. He's, he's very gooey, and you notice... The acid is starting to s- dissolve most of his skin. You see bone pretty much everywhere you look, except for like his face and his chest. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? Can I revive him? Like, do some kind of... He, he looks, he looks you beyond... You he looks wait. beyond that. I think he is an ex-goblin at this point. <laughs> okay, I want to use the acid is... breath then. I want to use the acid breath on... I want to use the acid, acid breath on the cube. Acid breath on the cube? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so it has to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, and it rolls a... So it rolls an 11, but it has minus 4, so that's an 8. That will not um, succeed. Your yeah. acid breath. So... Oh. Oh, actually, I li- I thought it was resistant to acid, but it isn't. I just assumed it was. But it's not. So you watch as Ori walks up. And it- his chest begins to expand. And you see his neck starts to bulge. And then from his mouth, like this geyser of hot liquid shoots out and engulfs the cube like a fire hose. Dang. And you-, you deal a total of ten damage as it bursts forth from you. And your acid melts away the rest of the, that acid as this dragonborn vomits the cube to death. Woo! You have all now slain the gelatinous cube. Hooray, progress! Alright, so, uh. That was a pain. <laughs> <laughs> Can I? Can I do a roll in this room to see what I can steal? You don't get to take things. You did nothing. <laughs> hey, I, it could be useful later. All right, so... Uh, uh, roll an investigation check. Well, actually, you know you can take the vial of clear liquid. But... 
All right, back to the ambient music. All right. Right from from the uh, I'm gonna roll an investigation. See what else is in this room aside from the uh, the potion. Then, all right. Okay. So four. four. Plus my plus my investigation, which is a four, so it's an eight. Okay, with an eight, you see that there's a lot of books and there's a lot of glass vials and there's a bunch of stuff in barrels, but the barrels seem tightly sealed and it'd be really obvious if you busted one open. So. You don't know the value of anything here. It's all wizardy stuff. You have a vague idea, Merit, of magic things, but you don't know how much some of the old stuff is worth, and a lot of this stuff is old, musty, dirty. Oi, Kasparov, what's in these vials? You call you Kasparov because <laughs> he's a Kasparov. ghost? <laughs> he's white as a ghost? Kasparov is, is the, 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 the chess guy, the famous chess guy. I'm calling him by the wrong name. He's probably going to call him the wrong name for the rest of the, the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm asking uh, Karnoff. I'm going to ignore him because that's not my is. name. <laughs> he can get my name right if he wants help. Endor? Ori uh, Flint, is there anything you'd like to do while they're having this exchange? Can I light a torch and look around more? Uh, yeah, you can. You light up a torch; it, it illuminates the room a little bit more. Uh, I mean, it was sort of lit from like a, a window, sort of up. You know, like basements. There's like that window that's up by the ceiling, and sort of the daylight shines in. But with a torch, you see more stuff. You see that there's uh, lots of papers and quills and more vials of liquids, all sort of bubbling. You see various powders. Lots of alchemical stuff, but of the arcane nature that you don't quite recognize, Ori. Um, lots of books, and, you know, there's there's not a lot actually here. You almost get the feeling that this cube of acid destroyed a lot of stuff, and that's why the wizard wanted it gone. And there's there's a dead goblin still just sprawled out on the ground now. Can I see if the, the goblin has anything on him, or is, like, everything he is, just acid? He is holding, he is holding on to... A gem of some sort. And yes, is... I, I want to take that. Okay. Uh, you pull it out and you reckon you see it. It is a holy symbol of some sort. It is made of onyx and there is two bits of emeralds. I would like you to roll a religion check to see what it is. So uh, look on your skill sheet and what's the number next to religion? Religion. Uh, Wait, that's on the left-hand side with everything else? So there, on the on the left, there, there's a thing that just says uh, stats. And then there's a other column with lots of small words that are your skills. There's like acrobatics, okay, yeah, athletics. Yeah, Look yeah religion. religion says four. Four, okay. So I rolled a 14. Mm -hmm. So that's a total of 18. And you know, as someone who's studied religions pretty much all your life at this monastery, that this is a holy symbol to a demon lord. The demon lord, Juiblex. The patron, the patron of oozes and slimes and disgusting things. That seems on brand. And you get the feeling that this goblin probably tried to summon something for help, and it blew up in his face. <laughs> okay, can I can I just hold on to it then? Yeah. So um, right, right in your uh, inventory or somewhere on your character sheet where it says treasure. You can type in holy symbol of Dweeblix. You can spell it however you want to spell it. It's actually more fun that way. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get my name right yet? Merit? Uh... Nine. Is it... Karnoff? That's good enough. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, these vials are. Can you're 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 the wizard. Wizard up here. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess. I guess I could run an investigation check on him, huh? Uh, what are you what are you looking at for? He wants to look. At, he wants me to find out what these vials are for, but. Well, the, only one, the only one left is the the clear one. So yeah. the, yep. There's other ones on the on the walls, aren't there? 
Yeah, but you have no idea what they are. They look like powders, like stuff he hasn't mixed yet. Okay. Uh, let me try, uh, let me, let me take it from him and I'll try, uh, I don't think Arcana's gonna help here, but maybe... I'd, I'd say just a straight, um, intelligence check. Not a skill. That's kind of what I was thinking was, yeah, intelligence. Just, yeah, just add your intelligence modifier and okay. bloody 20. Uh, 13 altogether. 13? You, um... Uh, you get the feeling that these are various ingredients for potions and poisons, but a lot of them are in their rough and raw state. And not a lot of in this in this form, they're not really that valuable. They haven't really been distilled yet, so they're just sort of like you know, it's basically like a pantry, but instead of spices, it's like poison and potion spices. They it's haven't been mixed. It's the storeroom. Yet. It's where he makes things. All right. Well. If there's nothing else nailed down, I'm going to take the other potion. Okay, you take the clear vial. You take the vial of clear liquid. You have now a vial of clear liquid, unless you'd like to drink it. Tell me. Might come in handy. All right. Cool. Um, so they said this time, you hear a creaking down the stairs, and it's like, Well, I guess you did it! Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> The stupid cube burned my beard. Why do you have a giant jelly cube in your basement? I don't. I guess the goblin did. <laughs> the government put a gelatinous cube in your basement? I like where your head's at, Sonny. No, the goblin. The, uh, the goblin go had it. <laughs> the go <laughs> right, there is no government. The government, uh, the government don't mess with Greeny. Greeny sent them straight to hell. Um... So, how did the goblin turn up in your basement? Did you know him personally? I don't know many goblins personally. They're not real personable folk. Uh, he wanted something. He wanted to talk to a demon. I said, no, demons aren't my business. Even though I do send people to hell on occasion. And, uh, he said, no, I'll do it myself then. He ran in my basement and he hid. I don't have the time to look for him. Thanks, guys. Uh Oh, I want to ask him a question then. Yes? He turns to you. He's Why like, did you start down into the basement if you knew it was dangerous? Did, did you really think we could defeat it? Well, I thought it was just a goblin. I didn't. I thought it was one goblin. I don't know. He'd start something. I haven't been down here in about a week. I just heard some banging. You never wanted to check on him to see what was down there? I had to tend to my clients. Plans, you, plans. You, you, you let a living being, a sentient Plan. being, down in your basement, and plans eat. with the tea. They did not see my garden. Okay, all right. You know, it sounds like you give me a lot of sad. You give old Greeny sad. He'll all right. Do we want to just ask him the questions? Yeah, you then... you owe me an explanation, old man. Here, tell me about this necklace. Ratto, follow me. So he takes you all upstairs, and he puts the um. He puts the amulet that you received last session on the table. He pulls out a couple of candles and he he pours a fine powder around it. And he wiggles his fingers and both of his eyes go white. His eyes go white for a second. And he looks at you really seriously and he says, This is the amulet of royal loyalty. I don't know how you got it, but you're <laughs> some shit now. <laughs> So like, Explain try yourself. So, I'm not going to give you the whole spiel in his voice, but he tells you that it's uh, it's called the... I'll send this to you, Travis, uh, after the stream, too, like a little card with all the information. It is the called the Amulet of Royal Loyalty, okay. and um, it is bound to a particular target, and it can cast... Uh, once a day, it can cast the spell Sending to that target, and at will, it can cast the spell Locate Creature on that target. And it can even uh, bypass anti-divination spells, like mind shielding and stuff. So it can contact. It's used to contact or find someone. Mm. This could be useful. Wait, didn't you say deep shit? Yeah! <clears throat> Explain yourself. Well, who are people who have that? 
are the people who serve the king and the princess. You can only find one person. The king's dead. So we can find the princess. A lot of people want to find the princess, and they'll kill you to find it. You better keep that safe. Uh, yeah, keep don't don't let too many people know that we have that. I won't. Yeah, I'm also not interested in finding this princess. What else can it find? Why aren't you? I've seen your future, Karnov. You have great things to do in this city. And you notice his glowing green eye, a pupil, now forms. Oh, yeah. I've seen great things in you. Dark things. But you better find that princess. There's gold in it. There's power in it. Don't deny that. As for you, Ori, I owed you a fortune, and here it is. I told you you couldn't be here without your companions, and you found them. The four of you are going to do great things in this city. You're going to have a tremendous impact and find tremendous dangers. And you'll find yourselves along the way. <laughs> and the, the puke goes away, and it's just glowing green once again. I went through all that trouble to hear something that I could have heard. That was so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this Woody Woodpecker talking motherfucker. You know what, Dwarf? You can give me a lot of sass. And Sorry, you, and I walk out of the house. Sorry, I don't believe in fortune you know, telling. You, you guys hear a... And Flint disappears. Uh. <laughs> and in green, he's just looking at all of you with a pleasant smile on his face. The dwarf has just vanished. Where'd he go? I sent him to hell. <laughs> I'll bring him back. I'll bring him back. I'll bring him back. What's, what's, uh, I mean, where did you really send him? I told you. I sent him to hell. So, uh, Flint. Uh, yeah. are you there, Evan? So, Flint, you are now floating. And in Oh, I'm endless... still, I'm still in this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, you're fired. Instantly, your vision goes entirely green. Deep emerald green. You are now floating. It is as if you are in water, but you don't. Nothing feels wet. It feels like you're in empty space. You have no idea. All you see is pure green in every direction, infinitely. This void. You have no concept of how far you are. You can't move. You're just flailing around in this endless field of green, and you just begin to hear voices say, "Green, green, green, green." Green. Green. This is what hell Green. sounds like. Green. Oh my Green. god. No. Mel Malkovich, Malkovich, Malkovich. Green. 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 Okay. Can I, I what feels like a lifetime of this? green. 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 You don't know what's happening. All of a sudden, you, you will all see the dwarf come back about a minute later. <laughs> Tell me that was like three weeks for him. <laughs> I felt like a lifetime. <laughs> oh, dwarf was hell green. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I was hell. I need a drink. Yep. <laughs> Sounds about right. Now you won't give me that sass. <laughs> you want to buy something? No. What? <laughs> Okay, enjoy your amulet, Ori. Mhm. Mm can I can I ask him about the thing that the goblin had? He, the okay. holy symbol. Okay, you read to him. He's like, "Oh, that that explains it." Yeah, Jewy Blacks. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. He's a gross one. <laughs> He's just a big old pile of goo, and he controls a layer of the abyss. Well, I mean, we killed him now, so. <laughs> Well, you didn't kill two Duplex. You killed a cube. That's the difference. Don't kill Duplex. He makes a lot of things green. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I'll give you 12 gold for it. No, no, I'm keeping it. Fair enough. Uh... The size of your life. But it was in your basement all this time. I know you would have paid me 12 gold. No, no, they say the goblin had it. The goblin must have had. Goblins get really strange things. 
turns Strange out. Strange folk, goblins. Yeah. So, if you have no further business... Don't. Yeah. Y'all probably should make your way down south. Wait, I want more of a fortune, though. Because that was kind of really unfortunate. I didn't really see anything. Are you giving old Greeny some sass? No. Oh, I sass. <laughs> Please, for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> we went through some real horror down in that basement, and we deserve, like, you know, Make, uh, something extra. I will roll a persuasion check for you. Okay. That is a uh, 16. He sort of nods his head. The pupil goes black again in his glowing green eye. He says, Ori, there's lots of things you can do in this city. It's hard to tell the future when the future's so unclear. But that's just some things that'll interest you. The princess is closer than you might think. No, she's hidden. She's in our hearts. <laughs> it's the friends we made along was that the some, way. Was that, was that some sass? No, no that was no, no, no question. We're good. No. She's not in your hearts. Oh. Not yet. <laughs> but if you want more answers, Ori, there's a district. They call it Religion Row. They got everything there. Every temple, every god, every cleric. There's more answers there. Does that work well, for you? Well, I'm interested in, in looking for the princess, but I'll go along for the ride. That's good. Seems All right, it of, will be. <laughs> seems like most of us are pretty apathetic towards finding this princess, but all signs point to let's find the princess. What do we make of this? I think whatever we make of it, we should do it where we don't get sent to green hell. Yeah, you don't want to go there, but... Uh... <laughs> no, you don't. You don't want to go to hell. Hold in finding this princess. I'm interested. Yeah, well, are you going to contribute? <laughs> you see, I do like sass when it's towards someone else. <laughs> see, even, okay, even though you along? didn't help. We could ask the wizard to come along or give us something to go along the journey. That's you a good go. idea, actually. I got stuff to sell if you got the goal. I got a business to run here. It's very important. I can't leave. Wait, do I have any gold? You have 15. What do you have to sell, old man? Well, let's stay here. Uh, <laughs> As he starts looking through and say, oh, yeah, okay. Um, I got some uh, little bits and bobs. He pulls out, like, a hat and, like, a wand and, like, a necklace and various things. He's like, and I got the good stuff up here. And there's a bat. He points up to a bag hanging from a rack, a jug. A little uh, headdress, or like a, a, a tiara, and a uh, an axe. Or you can take a roll on the mystery box. We're not <laughs> doing the box. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's, it pulls, let's, let's consider something. Let's consider, it pulls let's I, consider I, I the box. I played these games. <laughs> it's so a play, box. A mysterious so game. There's the a mystery involved, and it can't be worse than green hell. Let's consider the box. <laughs> It's a fucking loot box. <laughs> the box, the box! You can buy it for a hundred. Like, inspect the box then. If you buy it for a hundred gold, it can be yours. Oh, or a hundred gold. I have, okay, forget the box. Forget the box. I also have the premium boxes for 500 and the ultra premium boxes for 2,500. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> okay. Get out my house. <laughs> okay. We can I buy the tiara then? How much is the tiara? Tiara's a hundred. Actually, five hundred. Okay, no, no, we can leave. We can leave. Yeah, let's yeah. let's go. I ain't doing the box, I'm out. Dwarf, you got a lot of size. <laughs> yeah. You could you're you're uh you keep at that right, your plants are gonna sass you too. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Let's let's get you out of here. Yeah, yeah push, push me out. You push me out the door before this guy drives me crazy. <laughs> You've been to another dimension and you lost half your having 
day. I will never forgive that crazy man for costing <laughs> half my beard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you leave old Greeny's house, and you're now back out into the docks, and you see standing there the woman who was at the bar, who was still spinning her dagger. And she's like, oh, hello. I assume you're done with the wizard now. He was eccentric, wasn't he? Are you following us? Uh, just for this instance, because I kind of felt like you'd have more questions after him, and questions are my business. I actually have respect for that. Well done. Thank you. I've been at this game for a while. <sighs> well, uh, I have my offer of answering any questions you might have. I also sell maps of the city, because I know it quite well. Yeah, how much you charge for those maps? Five gold. Yeah, I'll take one. Thank you. So you hand her five gold, and she pulls out this little um, this little scroll, and she hands it to you. And you open it, and you see the it's a it's a well detailed, massive city map. And you see that there are tons of districts, and she points to the top of it, and she says, uh, we're right here right now. This is the docks. The north docks, to be precise. There's also the south docks, uh, but the, the butchers are on that side of the city. I don't know if you really want to go by there. And, um... Of course I want to go to where the butchers are. Wait. Well, wait. that's also where the Battle of the Bands is. You know, all the best music in the jungle. You know, it's a little shady, but, uh... Warehouse district, south docks. It's all good, except for the butchers. They're not good. We t are we talking like murderous butchers, or are we talking like like uh, food butchers? Uh, both, both actually. Now that you think about it. Oh, huh. Yeah. Okay. You know. <laughs> <I'll be eating. laughs> and uh, you know, actually, I must say, uh, I can you give me one silver? That was kind of a couple of questions. Oh. Yeah, sorry. you pay up this time. Okay. And she's like, ah, I'm just kidding. Nobody buys these maps, so thank you. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. You get a, you get a couple freebies, darling, and she gives you a wink. Okay. <laughs> so, right here, you're in the North Docks. This is uh, a little expensive for lots of people passing through. But um, and if you're looking for other things, if you want looking for housing here, there's a man named Kerr. He's over down yonder the street. Wears a fine purple robes. Looks very uh, pretentious. Easy to spot. You can also take the South, and she points to... On the map, and I'll send you guys a picture uh, later on. There, in the middle of the city, it's divided by there's these three rings, and there's uh, two lines that like crosshair it. And she points out, this is a feature of the jungle alone. Everyone speaks of Va'alamon's underground transit system. Okay, the we have to go there. And she said, you can take this magic train. Almost anywhere in the city to these 12 stops. How efficient. Yes, but correct? you have to pay? You do have to pay. Yeah. However, the city knows a lot of, uh, well, uh, offense to you, darlings, uh, bums sort of show up. And so you can take the south for free. You only go to one station, and it's, it ends you up at the tunnels. But there's a cheap place for people like you. It's called the Dragon's Dungeon. Right there in the tunnels. You can find adequate arrangements there. Or if you want to buy a house, you know, Kerr, he's over there. Sometimes he works out a good deal. He might be in debt for a little bit, but, you know. You get in debt, you work your way out. That's, that's, that's capitalism, right? Mm. That's what the city's all about. Huh. Any questions? Any questions? More silver? Can I pay what her, like, you... one silver to hear her backstory? She's like, oh, oh, nobody answers? I'll give you that for free. No one wants to hear that. <laughs> My name is... <laughs> the name is Kip Silver. Silver's not the real last name, but I won't give it to you because I, I had to have some secrets. And, um... Well, I actually grew up in a little town over in Leoria, made my way over here. Uh, I'm a dabbler in the musical arts and the arts of storytelling. Some people call us bards. Some people find us very inspiring. And I like to think I am too. I've lived here for about five years. I've learned about everything there is about this city. And, uh, you know, I used to be an adventurer like you. But then I, uh, I wisened up. 
and I decided just to make my coin off of giving information. And so here I am. That's it? What more do you need? What do you need? I mean, my farmer, my, my dad was a pig farmer. Is that really that interesting? Okay, well, we could go somewhere on the map then. Yeah, uh, so before we do, I'm going to drop another silver in her hand. Mm-hmm. Because I understand the ways of business. Yes. What can you tell me uh, about this missing princess? Well, her name is Magla. She's a very headstrong lady. But she was really mysterious, you know, like, up over yonder, and she points to the center of the city, which now you notice, like... Like, there's lots of tall buildings for miles and miles to see, but the center of the city is this acropolis, almost like a mountain in the middle of the city, and on top of which is a golden palace. She lived up there, and her dad was real suspicious about letting her out of the place. So not too many people have seen her, but people know she she knows how to fight, she's well-read, and, uh, yeah. And yeah. What was she's... the name again? <laughs> Mogla. M-O-G-L-A. Ma, ma, okay. Anybody know what, where she? Now, how did she go missing? Yeah. She left. I. This is a freebie. You almost caught me. She folds out her hands. Fine. Thank you. So when uh, the old king died, <clears throat> when the old king died. He, uh, you know, it was real tragic. The whole the whole city went into chaos, and then uh, he he was thrown. He was found with his throat cut, his tongue ripped out, his heart ripped out. It was awful. It was grisly, and um, you know, the princess just told everyone, "He's back. I gotta run," and that was the last thing she ever said to any of her guards. She went missing, took all her stu all her things, took her took her sword, took all her clothes, and she just up and disappeared. She's a well-read lady. She knows all about the city. Knows all about the people in it. So she probably found out a nice hole to hide out, and she thinks there must be something up with her daddy's murder. Hmm. So why right. why would so this this is not a question to her because I'm not paying her for this because she would not be <laughs> answering this question. Why are we interested in finding her if she left of her own accord? I'm not interested in finding her at all. Hold on. So, wait, what? <laughs> I'm assuming it has to do with murder. Murder? Her father was murdered, yes. Uh, well, mm, yeah. Well, and, uh, I guess we Kip, could just find her and figure out what happened. Kip pipes in. It's like, I will answer this because it's a freebie. She probably has a lot of money. And wants help rebuilding his government. Because, you know, uh, a lot of the movers and shakers are starting to get real unsettled. There's lots of talk. People are trying to take over things for themselves. Everybody's in talks of it. She's going to need help. Huh. That sounds like everybody's got a good idea. <laughs> Well, what? We have no, if you have no further questions, I advise talking to your man, Kerr, or taking the south to the Dragon's Dungeon. That's probably the best two options you got, newcomers. You'll know where to find me, though. I, I hit up the Dungeon Dragon myself from occasion, or you can find me here in the docks. It's been a pleasure. Say Silver. She walks away. Thanks, Silver. Uh, so should we shack up in a hole in the ground with a bunch of smelly bums, or should we talk to this guy? I don't want to go into debt. I mean, we're living in a city. In I don't want to sleep in a ditch. I've done enough of that. Well, it's either a ditch, the street, or we try to talk to somebody, so... As a city, yeah, we can walk around and explore someone. Um, hmm. This dragon has a sigil worth a hundred gold. Maybe we can make maybe we can make it worth its while if uh trade it, sell it, and find somewhere better to live. 
You mean the... Wait, wait, what are you talking about? The... I'm you referring mean to... The amulet, huh? You're talking about the amulet? No, the, uh, the, the, the sigil that, uh, Ori has. That's worth 12 gold. Huh. Amulet worth to the, to, to, to the Dr. Green guy, man, dude, person? He he was offering twelve gold for the for the holy symbol that Ori found on the goblin. Did, did, he, did he? Can, can I, I just, just go sell him the necklace and we don't have to deal with this princess? Ah, I agree with the, I agree with the uh, the tiefling. You know, if we okay. find the princess, then we'd be not worried about any of these things because, I mean, well, we'd we be a new that? government, right? That's kind of a cool idea. They give us money. Yeah. Um, also, Kip, I I forgot to say this, but Kip Silver would have told you that over in the Dragon's Dungeon, the place in the tunnels, it's uh, it's it also has a job posting board. So if you want to find other things to do, there's that too. Well, I say we find lodging, but we are not in a position where we can purchase a facility. I right, I guess we should just hit the trains then. To the tunnels. Yes. Where else? It's probably getting dark by now. Uh, no, it's probably it's only been about like two or three hours, so it's probably like three oh. p.m. God, it felt like an eternity. No, <laughs> for you, 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 <laughs> Flitz, have felt like you've lived through an eternity. That's for sure. Alex, can I roll a d12 to figure out the time of day? Uh, no. <laughs> I can. That's a DM thing. Uh, it's eleven a.m. How about oh, that? Yeah. How about that? You arrived. You arrived at eight in in the bright early morning. Three hours later, it's eleven a.m. Most of us, it's it's been Walking three hours. Walking around the city with nothing to do. Let's let's well, go to the tunnels, dragons. Okay. Let's okay. See what we can do with that. So, you uh you make your way through and you sort of ask around where is the uh, transit system and people sort of point over to. A building. It is tall and made of stone, and uh, you flint instantly recognize it as dwarvish make. And um, it says up on top, uh, it says North Red Station. And so, as you're walking down towards it, you see the man in the purple robes that Kip pointed out, and he sort of looks down the street and he's looking around. And all of a sudden, you hear him shout, "No!" Wait, no! More time! More time! And you see approaching him a familiar figure in all black with silver trim and a thick handlebar mustache. As Axel Thorne is walking down the street and the entire street is clearing away from him. And he pulls out something. It looks almost like a wand made of metal. He holds it like a crossbow and he points it at the man in, in purple. He says, no! No! No, please! I have the man! I have the man! And you say, as smoke erupts from Axel's device and a geyser of blood just erupts from this man's shoulder and then his gut and then his jaw. As Axel takes his pistol and blows the smoke off of it. And everyone is just running up into their doors, cowering. You guys are the only people standing there. And you look around, now the streets are empty. And he sort of looks at you all, and he sort of nods. And he just walks over to the dead body, and he says, Now, Kerr, now, Kerr. We talked about this. You take from the pack! And he's now shouting out into the, into the entire street. You gotta pay his back. In the gold, or blood. Now, this sorry son bitch didn't have much gold. But lucky for us, he has a fuckload of blood! And he shoots... This man's head on the ground and it just pops like a melon spewing red and brain everywhere and he just starts firing his gun off into the air i run with the pack and the pack runs the jungle and everyone's just cowering in fear and running upstairs and looking out windows and shaking and, and one little boy walks out with a with a brush uh, with a broom and Axel flips him one gold coin and says, Sorry about the mess, Sonny. And struts about his day. 
Was was he this crazy when he was on the ship? Uh, this is definitely a... not. But he looked like he was uh, kind of sketchy. Surprised by the fact well, that he wound up being kind of this. We're, the the three of us, I imagine, are probably like totally unfazed by this. Am. Um. It's it's a well the all four of you don't recognize the device that he pulled out. No, but I think to myself I got to get one of those. Um <laughs> that you do as a as a as a pirate you really want it. I do. And I also noticed I also noticed the name that he said and I say to the rest of the group, was that the guy that we were told we should go see if we want housing? It was. So does that mean that his house is free? It could be. He just Ooh. killed somebody they want to go ask him for, for housing. <laughs> um, this I, I, is I, we're, we're, we're repurposing resources. I like, like how, I like I like how it's idea. Because I'm not even sure he'd be a good host. I go through if you thought, oh, that guy got murdered steal his house, and then Ori's standing there like, what? <laughs> awesome, hey, actually. I didn't invite her, okay? <laughs> but I like the coward's plan. <laughs> So, uh, you're still standing out in front of the train station. Let's go speak to the murderer. We're on good terms. Oh, you, you're going to walk up to Axel? Yeah. Are, are we on good terms with him? I don't know yeah. about that. Well, we're about to find out, folks. I kneeled, I kneeled down in front of the body, and uh, can, should I do a perception check for anything on his person? Uh, lots of bits of brain and blood everywhere. I then Ooh, ask the question, please, 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 sir, I... sir, are you leasing? <laughs> to, the, to the dead body. <laughs> to the dead body. <laughs> you get no response. <laughs> <laughs> you I hear silence. Answer for that. <laughs> and there's a, there's a little boy who's mopping everything and looking at you just like, and shaking his head. <laughs> He's had a bad day, son. <laughs> so I stand aside and just watch the scene go out, play out. Alright, so, I'm gonna go up to Axel. Okay. And, 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 and I'm gonna be polite. I'm gonna say excuse me. And he's, he just looks back and he's like, ah! Fuck off, goat boy. Keeps walking. Maybe we should just leave him alone. Let's yeah, go I'm not He just killed somebody uh, I want to leave him alone. I'm not gonna. No, that. he's not bothering us. Did Good, you let's find keep a key it that on the way. body? Did you? Uh, did you find a key on that body? Just chunks of skull and brain. <laughs> Which of these houses is his? I, uh, you you asked the little boy, and he uh, he he's he, this dead guy. He the little boy who's mopping up the brains is. That's it's not his anymore. The pack took it. It's the packs now. To the train pack. station, then, I guess. The pack. Who is this pack? Well, clearly Roll. Axel works for the pack. Axel works for the pack, as he loudly proclaimed to the world. Um, Karnov, I'll say roll a history check with advantage. Because you have your criminal contact, you know criminal underworld. But... So do a history check with advantage, Karnov. Hmm. And uh, how are people feeling? Should we uh, end up soon? We getting tired? Yeah, probably. No, no. Uh, I, I admittedly am, but I am not feeling a hundred. Okay, well, today, we're, com so. we're, we're coming up to an end point, so it'll be fine. Should we just stay in the hovel in the ground? Let's find this train station. Okay, so you're walking yeah, to the train station. All right, station. so you're walking to the train station. You walk down the set of. Uh, stone carved dwarven stone stairs and you get down and there's a little gnome with a hat sitting there and he's like tickets are you taking the south mm. Mm. for a ticket that depends south. on where you're going sonny uh, the south is the free one the south is Gips the free trip. yeah let's go in the south yeah all right poor sorry bastards and he just pulls out like three tickets out of his back pocket and hands it to all of you Good luck out there. And so you walk past him, and you come to a railway, and what pulls up are a string of mining carts with sort of like a roof, sort of um, 
erected over them and a couple of windows that can be folded in and out. And you see that at the bottom where the wheels meet the rails, there's little currents of electricity that are sort of winding the wheels up. And it's all these underground tunnels. And so you board the train and it just like zooms off quicker than anything you guys have ever experienced. And it just, you, you're, yep, the seats are sideways, so you sort of all lurch to the right as you all bolt forward. And you ride for a couple minutes. And while you're riding, Karnov, you're thinking, where have you heard the pack before? What was your uh, history check? Oh, yeah, let me. We were thinking about things, so I didn't roll it. Yeah. Nine. Nine? You don't know what the pack is. You've, all you know, actually, the pack, you're thinking about it, your criminal contact just told you one thing when you told him that you were heading over to this city. And he just said, don't fuck with the pack. That's it. Your one sentence. That's all you know about them. Mm. So I roll a history check. Uh, go ahead. As a thief. All right, so that's a d20. Yeah. Are you proficient in history? No. No. Okay. That'll that that affects it. So let me know. Old a nineteen. A nineteen, but not proficient. Yeah. Okay, with a nineteen. You also have been through some crime, and you've sort of learned a little bit. You know that there's some nasty dudes. You've heard the pack. You've heard of the pack before. You know they sort of put the squeeze on people. But um, you've heard that. But you've heard lots of different rumors of what their business is. You've heard that. Um, you know that they 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 sell buildings. You've heard that they are run like a racket. You've heard drugs. You've heard literally everything. You just know that they are a criminal syndicate. That somehow has lasted a long time. That's all you know. Mm. All right, so survive in the city. We either need to stay on the good side of the pack, or we need to join them in some way. Oh, so, what makes you what think? You want- what makes you think that we could just operate outside of their scope of work? It doesn't sound like that's going to be a possibility. They're that Can either huh? just stay on their good side and, you know, not get in their way, or we can make it worth their while for us to be in their way. You saying, like, do contract work for them, probably killing Correct. people. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm saying killing people for the bad guys. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What in Maybe we should so find out what, in, what, what an power these people actually is. control. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, I, should, I, should, I shouldn't be morally conflicted. I'm a pirate, but I mean, I believe in good and bad. <laughs> it's about throwing your lot in with someone who's going to stab you in the back. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. So I would say keep them at arm's length, but if they want to, uh, you know pay us money for anything every once in a while, sure. But the problem is, is that when you're talking about a mob, it's a mob. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna swindle you one way or the other. The answer, of course, is to make sure we're the ones doing the stabbing. Correct. Listen, I I have no issues either way with either this pack or with this princess. I don't care. All I want is gold. The way you guys want to do it you clearly are more adverse in combat and crap than I am. All I want is the gold at the end. So whatever you choose, whatever way you want to go down, as long as it ain't too goody-goody, I'm down for whatever. Do you want gold? You better start pulling your weight. I'll make an attempt. <laughs> Why don't we get you one of those magic, uh, you know, hand cannons as they as they look? Maybe. I'm thinking about something for all right so after a while i'm having this conversation on the train uh it pulls up to a stop and a little gnome in a little conductor's outfit sort of walks out he says uh this would be the uh the south red station uh get off (laughs) what a charmer (laughs) sorry (laughs) <laughs> escorts you sort of ushers with his hands you walk out the train and you get out and 
You are now on the totally south side of the city. You see the ocean. The sun is in a different position. Where you were once looking north, you are now looking south. And um, things look bad here. The buildings are shoddy, and they're sort of tipping over. You ever been to like Amsterdam, where they're sort of all like leaning to one side? They're tall, and they're built up, and they're all crumbling in on each other. And you notice that there's holes, like deep, wide holes, all throughout the ground. There's like random, t like it looks like the street like broke in certain areas. And there's just tunnels that go out from under them, and there's like kids and like rags are skipping through the street amongst all these like holes and cobblestone wrecked grounds everywhere. The houses have have blown out windows. There's puddles of various muck everywhere. There's people in alleyways smoking things and sort of looking at each other, and everyone looks really sad to be here. But you do see. But you do see far ahead of you a bigger building. Like one, like all these buildings are really shabby and small, except for one, which is rather large, and it looks almost like a hotel. A good mo hotel or a cheap hotel? What do you think? I, I mean, in another district, it would look cheap. Here, it looks amazing. Mm. I don't trust that at all. The only good-looking building in the whole of the town? Mm -mm. Well. Mm. Alright, so... Might as well go in. Yeah, uh, may as well go into the best-looking <laughs> building out here. It's not like, I mean, we have... All right. Some so you cash. <laughs> you walk down the street, and walking down the street is actually you have to sort of like hop and jump from bits in the sidewalk to other bits in the sidewalk. As there's just chasms, and you see like signs that just say like "Welcome to the tunnels, go back." And you see actually in one of said tunnels, you see there's something with a claw and a tentacle that kind of pokes out into the sunlight and then instantly retreats. Little bits of smoke puff out from some of the tunnels. You hear random sort of screeching. You see a man sort of in a in an alleyway, sort of dressed in rags. He's sitting in a puddle, and he's just, like, shake. He's holding his legs, shaking back and forth, muttering to himself, and, like, chewing his own hand. And right next to that, you see a large wooden building with hundreds of feet wide and six stories high with many windows on each floor and roof with a cracked and missing shingles. Some of the glass is missing in some of the windows, and between the several that are open, you hear cacophonous laughter, angry shouts, electric currents snapping and popping, and there's at least two explosions that go off. There's smoke emanating from at least three of the windows, and there's a sign that's carved over the, um, the door of this huge wooden grinning dragon holding like a portcullis, and in the portcullis are the words, The Dragon's Dungeon. This place looks... Yeah, let's go inside there. What a place to begin. Looks like a war zone out here. <laughs> and kind of we will enter the dragon's dungeon on the next episode of The Dungeon, folks. Neat! Woo! Yeah. Man, we're just gonna job, die. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to the jungle. Where you've got fun as they games. Say. Indeed. So, um... I believe the next two weeks we'll have to take off because then it's Christmas and New Year's, like right after. Um, Literally but, the day of. But, mm. I know. So that's the one problem between Mondays. But in the new year, we'll pick it back up with everybody entering the Dragon's Dungeon and seeing what's up. I think you guys had a uh, an interesting second adventure. Yeah. Ori has joined. Ori has joined the team and found well, out we're terrible. You defeat. <laughs> hey, you defeated the cube. The infamous cube of and, gelatinous fog. And green hell. And green hell. You have endured green hell. I wouldn't say hell. you defeated that. <laughs> you like endured it. <laughs> and uh, you've witnessed many awful things in this city. But now you're hoping you can begin uh, seeing the good things. And now you have. You know what your amulet does. And I'll send later to you, Travis, uh, all the stuff it does in full detail. And yeah. Sounds good. So thank you, everybody, for watching the stream. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I definitely did. How is everybody feeling about our game? Pretty great. Pretty sassy. Yeah, pretty sassy. Yeah, it was... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's fun. 
Oh no, it's fun. It's fun. He'll just send you straight to hell. <laughs> oh boy. All right. All right. Uh, have a good night, everybody. All right. And uh, we'll see you next.